Hello, my name is David Hicks. Thank you for tuning in once again to this video on the video series on was Jesus God's son? Was he the Messiah? This is the third, and in this video, we're going to talk about why is why does the question even matter? Jesus was God's son, he wasn't God's son. Why don't, why don't we just pay attention to what he taught us? That's what's important, not who he was, but what he taught. And so that's the question we're going to address, uh, focus on in this video. It's a very legitimate question, a uh, great question, uh, I do believe, and one very important. Before we get into that, though, I will explain um, this T-shirt, when to wear it once again. It, um, it says, pray for, um, well, uh, hashtag pray for Jay. Okay, pray, pray for Jay. Uh, Jay stands for Jackson Igo. He's a uh, man who's just been through, a uh, young man, uh, 18, 19 years old, who's been through intestinal disease, and countless surgeries, unbelievable pain. Um, so he's just suffered a lot. So if you could say a prayer for Jackson, um, his parents and his parents, they greatly appreciate it. Anything you could say on his behalf, it would, again, it would be greatly appreciated. I can't imagine um, seeing my son go through what, this their son is going through. So, um, okay. So we've talked about uh, this, this question. In case you missed the first two videos, uh, was what does it mean that was Jesus the Messiah? And the reason we're asking was Jesus God's son and was he the Messiah together is because the ideas are wrapped together. Now, I didn't really want to. I mean, just to be honest with you, I really didn't even want to talk about that question. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible and just focus on was Jesus God's son. But the two ideas are so entangled in, in Scripture in the story of Christ that I had to. We had to address it. And Messiah simply means anointed, anointed one. Uh, it comes from a Hebrew word. Christ also. Uh, it comes from a Greek word. It also means anointed one. So when you're talking about the Messiah, you're talking about the Christ. You're talking about the same thing, the anointed one. They're all the same person. Okay, and we looked especially at Psalm, the second Psalm in the Old Testament where it talked about this, that the nations would rise up against God and against his anointed one, his Messiah, his Christ. And it shows, it demonstrates, uh, as, you, as you read the lyrics to the song there, a psalm means psalm, that this anointed one is, is God's son. He's the king. The anointed one equals God's son and equals the king. Okay. So whenever, you know, the question is being asked, was Jesus the Messiah? We're asking at the same time, was he God's son? If you're asking, was he God's son? You're asking, was he Messiah? It's, it's, they're referring to the same person. And so that's why we're addressing this question at the same time. So we looked at, in our last video, uh, who claimed that Jesus was God's son. In the, in the writings of the Bible, uh, and remember, this was done by, by different people. As they wrote about the story of Jesus, we see angels claiming that he was God's son, demons, even unclean spirits, um, sp spirits that don't follow God, don't follow Jesus, claiming he was God's son. God himself, we see it when Jesus was baptized. We see it, uh, there was an incident where Jesus took Peter, James, and John on top of a mountain. He was transfigured before them. And Moses and Elijah appeared um, in the last video, I explained who they are. I'm not going to do that now. But Peter says, hey, we'll, we'll build a tabernacle. We'll build a, a shelter for you, Jesus, for, for Moses, for Elijah. And then God speaks up again and says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. He's greater than Moses. He's greater than Elijah. He is my son. Listen to him. Are the implications there. And so finally, we looked at different places where Jesus claimed to be this Messiah, he claimed to be God's son. And when you read Matthew 26, it, it's the reason they crucified him. Because they thought he was blaspheming. He was insulting God by claiming to be God's son. So, now, we're at the point where we're stepping back for a second and saying, okay, he was, he wasn't. Why does that even matter? All right, so the first thing I would say to that is there's already precedent, precedent, uh, forgive me, I, you know, I'll learn English someday. There are, there's already precedent in Scripture that it matters. 
as to whether or not he was God's son and that you can't just simply accept his teachings without accepting who he was. I'll take you to 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. You may, if you saw the last video, you may remember, and, and I just mentioned him, John was one of the three people that Jesus took up onto the mountain where he was transfigured before him. John was very passionate about Jesus being, uh, having come in the flesh and, and actually being God's son. And so in 1 John chapter 4, he writes this, and if I struggle with it, forgive me, I'll lay my reading glasses down somewhere and I don't have them on me. Um, he writes this, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. What's he talking about when he's talking about spirits? He's basically talking about the, the, the spirit of, of the people who are, you know, making false claims. Okay, Te well, test the spirit of the person, shall we say. Because that might be a good person. All right, so test the spirit of the person. And, and because many false prophets have gone out to the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. All right, this is how I can recognize the Spirit of God in, in this person is the implication. How can I recognize the Spirit of God in you, uh, the Spirit of God in this person, this prophet? Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. You acknowledge that Jesus has come in the flesh, you're from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. You're not acknowledging Jesus, you're not acknowledging God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. See, what's going on here? In this, in this time, there was, there was a false doctrine, and it was just in its infancy going around and spreading among the people that Jesus didn't really come in the flesh. I mean, yeah, he, he looked like a flesh and blood human being, but he really wasn't. He was just a, a spirit. It was kind of an illusion. And so you can, you can step back and say, well, okay, why does that even matter? Because still, you can you can accept what Jesus taught about, you know, uh, treat others the way you want to be treated, um, love one another the way he loved us, uh, forgive one another. And so many wonderful teachings of Christ that we can learn and accept and still say, but, you know, he wasn't really a flesh and blood human being. And, and the reason that people would even think that, to say that, is because, you know, being a human being, it's extremely hard to imagine that someone could live a life and never sin. But that's cornerstone to who Jesus was and what he did for us that he never sinned. And let me read the claim. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Didn't, um, didn't really plan on going here. Okay, so it's not on your, uh, it's not, my apologies, it's not written on the board. And uh, my apologies, the, the, I know the writing's smaller than normal. I did, probably tried to put too much up on there. But Hebrews chapter 4, beginning of verse 14. It says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, here's the Hebrew writer claiming Jesus was God's Son, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You see, when we pray to the Father, God, uh, Jesus is the high priest standing between us and the Father and, and pleading for mercy on our behalf and grace on our behalf. He's going to bat for us, so to speak. He's fighting for us. And he can sympathize with us. He can empathize with us because he, he went through temptation. He lived uh, you know, among us as a human being. He knows what it's like to be human, to be in this flesh. 
But what did he never do? He never sinned. Now, someone might say, you know, how can you really understand what it is to be human if you never sinned? Well, it, it, this is this is completely David Hicks' opinion and philosophy stuff. So, all right, so I, I'm I'm just jumping off scripture page here, just throwing out food for thought. Even though Jesus never sinned, it doesn't mean he doesn't know what it's like to make a mistake. What are you talking about? Because not all mistakes are sin. You see, for example, Jesus, uh, scripture tells us, was a carpenter by trade. Well, he probably not got, he probably didn't get every order right. He probably not every chair he tried to make came out perfectly. It would have been a skill that he would have had to learn, and he would have made mistakes along the way. So yes, it doesn't necessarily mean that Jesus didn't make mistakes, but it definitely means that he never made the mistake, the mistake of sinning. So that claim is definitely there. Why is that important? Because the whole concept of Jesus dying for us is based on the fact that we are sinners and he wasn't. So he could volunteer to die on our behalf. One thief cannot take the punishment for another thief. They, they both have to be punished. So in order for me to, to be spared from the punishment I deserve, someone who doesn't also have to be punished has to come in and volunteer to take that punishment for me. It's the only way it works. And so Jesus, by living a sinless life, was able to volunteer to God saying, I'll take the punishment for them. And he died a hellish death, a tortuous death. Um, in being tortured, whipped, beaten, spat on, etc., and then crucified, um, crucified, nailed to a cross um, on our behalf. So, um, so the the idea was going on in John's day that that there, there's no way that could be true. You couldn't have been a genuine flesh and blood human being and lived a sinless life. So Jesus must have just been a spirit. He just looked like he was flesh and blood. And so, again, this is a teaching where, you know, this is a concept where you could accept that Jesus was not in the flesh and still accept a lot of what he taught. So what is John's response to that? Uh, no biggie? No. John's response was that if, if that is what you're saying, you are being an antichrist. You are being against Christ. So if that's the case, then I could accept Jesus' teachings and still say that he didn't really come in the flesh and I find myself against Christ. Then how much more if I say he wasn't even God's son? How can I not be an antichrist, a person against Christ, if I'm denying the claim that he was God's son? See, it's a question that, you know, we're not talking about what he taught and the value of what he taught and are you living by what he taught. You can be kind, you can be gentle, you can be humble, you can be hospitable, you can be the greatest neighbor anybody's ever had. Loving brother, loving sister, but if you're saying, nah, Jesus didn't come in the flesh, you're against Christ, would it not work the same way with saying, nah, Jesus really wasn't God's son? So that's one thing to think about. Uh, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 15. Back to the tiny letter of 1 John chapter 4, verse 15. John writes this. We know that we live in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. Oh, I'm sorry, in verse 13, like I said, my glasses are not on me. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him, and he in God. So God lives in those who acknowledge the Son. If I say that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in me and, 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 um, and, and I in him, okay? But what's the implication there? Well, the implication is that if I, you know, don't acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, God doesn't live in me. 
and I'm not living in God. That's the implication. And he goes on, 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. And we'll see some other reasons as to why this question is important of whether or not Jesus was God's son. Uh, 1 John chapter 5. John continues, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. That Jesus is the what? The Christ, the anointed one. The anointed one, who is God's son, who is the king. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and obeying and carrying out his commands. This is love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God has overcome the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. How can we overcome the world? How can we overcome the evil of this world, the darkness of this world, the ways of this world? Who? overcomes this, the person who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. The implication meaning we're not going to overcome it if we don't believe that. If we don't believe that. Uh, verse 6, this is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. We accept, that God, we accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his Son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. We find eternal life in his son, in Jesus. So what does he say? Anyone who believes in the son of God has God's testimony in their heart. But the thing is, if we don't believe, we're making God out to be a liar. It's hard to please God when you're saying, God, you're a liar. And, and what did we just, what, what did uh, we saw in the last video? Or in, in, in review, I think earlier in this video, boy, short-term memory issues there. Matthew 3, Matthew 17, God said, this is my beloved son. So understand, if we're saying God, Jesus wasn't God's son, we're saying, God, you're a liar. That's what John's trying to help us understand here. Jesus' follower, John, he's trying to help us understand. So I really want you to be able, and this, this is a shorter, verse, shorter video than normal uh, so far, maybe. I, I could definitely ramble. But I want you to be able to research this question for myself, whether or not you ever watch another David Hicks video again, you know, that, that's between you and the Lord. Uh, you know, I hope I keep making videos and I hope they're helpful to, to from you till from now till, till Jesus comes back or the day you part this earth. May these videos be of help to you and, and may they be a blessing to you. Okay, but I want you to be able to try, if you want to just go and, and research this for yourself, uh, uh, let me give you a few suggestions. Okay, we've just been reading uh, 1 John. So if you get a Bible, and, and I encourage you, maybe you're watching this, and, and I've had somebody from India actually, um, well, not only show interest in the video, but even before recently someone from India, India showed interest in this, these videos, uh, I got a little message from somebody. Um, I don't even know the person at all from India saying that he's been watching the videos and they've been a blessing. But so English is probably not his first language. So if English is not your first language, I encourage you find a Bible either online or, you know, that you can hold in your hand that is in your primary language. Um, 
is is a that's in your primary language, and and read this letter of First John, okay, and then that that's about the First John helps us that we've just been reading now with why the question why these questions matter. First John helps us see why these questions matter, and it will also help in, in answering those questions. But even more, read the Gospel of John. The the John wrote about the life of Jesus. The first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. That John um, is all about who was Jesus. It answers the questions multiple times in multiple ways. And even more was, there's more questions than was Jesus God's son? Was he the Messiah? There's also, was he this? Was he that? And, and the whole gospel of John deals with those questions. John was extremely passionate about helping people see what he saw, what he believed, and he doesn't hide it. He says, I wrote this that you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the anointed one, the Son of God. So I encourage you, read it for yourself. Um, First John is a little, bit, a little letter, and then the Gospel of John. There are other people who have written about this. You know, if you want something outside of the Bible, Lee Strobel wrote The Case for Christ. The ironic thing was when Lee Strobel set out to write his book, he was going to write the case against Christ. I mean, he literally set out to disprove that Jesus was God's son, and he ended up writing about how he is. So it's it's a very powerful book, Lee Strobel, The Case uh, for Christ. Finally, my number one recommendation, okay, cry out to God for guidance. You whether you believe that, um, now I am going on the assumption you believe that God exists. And you can even do this if you don't believe God exists. You can say, God, if you are there, if you really exist, please show me and show me whether or not Jesus was your son. Was he really your son? Please show me. Cry out. You cry that out with sincerity, with sincerity. And humility, look out. Because God is, if you really want to know the answer, God is going to find ways to show you the answer. Be prepared. Have your eyes open. But that is my number one recommendation. Start there. Cry out to God. And even if you don't believe in him, if you have to say, God, if you really are there, okay, that's where you're at. Fine. Wonderful. Let, start the journey. Because here is the bottom line. You really want to know why these questions matter? Okay, I, I tried to, to, in this video, give you a few reasons why it's saying that it matters. Okay, here's something also that the Bible says and reasserts. And I'm sorry about the small writing here. A day of judgment is coming. You see, a key part of the, of the whole gospel story is that Jesus rose from, it wasn't just God's son, he rose from the dead. That's also an essential part of the story. If he didn't rise from the dead, there's, there's no hope of life after death. And the, the Bible itself says that. 1 Corinthians 15, go, you know, go read it if you like. Okay? So at some point, there's going to be a final day over with, ever. As they say in Object Bay, shout, uh, shout out to people in Benin. Um, ever. It, it's over with. And God on that day is going to raise the dead and there is going to be a judgment day. And God is, you know, there are people whose names in Revelation, the final book, also written by John, the final book of the Bible, talks about there's a book of life. And some people's names are going to be written in it. Some people's names aren't. And in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 through 46, Okay, and by the way, that Revelation scripture, and then you can't see it. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 21, verse 8, talks about judgment day and that God is going to replace this broken world with a brand new one. We, we do that, right? We have cars that break down. We're going to get a brand new one. This thing's too messed up. God's looking at this world, and at some point, it's like, uh uh, it's too messed up. Over. Okay, I'm replacing it with a brand new one. And in the brand new one, all the stuff that makes this life so stinky, so miserable, so awful to where I have to wear a Pray for Jay shirts because he's been through so much and so many other people have suffered like him. God's getting rid of it all. He's making a paradise. 
without the suffering and the pain. That's all. It's all in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11, verse through 21, verse 8. In Matthew 25, Jesus details this judgment day. And, you know, he's talking about everlasting life. He's talking about everlasting punishment. I know people debate the everlasting punishment part. We're not going to get into that debate today. The bottom line is a judgment day is coming. And the choices are so diametrically opposed to one another, they couldn't be more opposites. Paradise or just painful torture. And that in and of itself is way too important a question. Is there really a judgment day coming to leave that question ignored? To live one's life and never research an answer. To just kind of go into to death blindfolded and just rolling the dice. You know, maybe it is, maybe it's not. You owe it to yourself, to your family, to your loved ones to, to research the question. Was Jesus really God's son? Is this stuff really true? Because if it is, then do everything you can to get ready and, and, and embrace the grace of God. And, and if, you know, uh, short and sort, believe. Um, believe in God. Believe in Jesus. Repent. Make that decision to turn away from evil and embrace what is right in God's sight. And then be baptized. The Bible says be baptized in the name of God, the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit. And God washes away your sins, forgives you. It doesn't matter how much wrong you've done. He forgives and he will keep on forgiving without you even having to be baptized again. Just stay humble before him, acknowledge your, you know, acknowledge your sins and, and keep working on following him. It's a growth process, but his grace will stay with you. And it will, you know, um, till death, do you, there's not going to be until death do you part. It's, it's till death and beyond. It's, it's too big. Please do not live your life without researching an answer to these questions. And may God guide you to what I absolutely believe slash know is the truth. That Jesus was his son. And that he is real. And that there's eternal life coming if we'll embrace it. But there's also... Yeah, the other. So please, research this question. Cry out to God. He'll answer. May God bless you. May God bless this recording. Thank you for listening. I am not worthy for you to take time out of your day to listen to me. So thank you. God bless you.